uh, Syria is not an ordinary country, but Syria is not facing ordinary circumstances. And in, in, when I, you know, during over these years when I go to Syria, I, I, I've regularly visited and lectured at different universities, whether it's the University of Damascus or um, uh, Aleppo or uh, the university in Latakia. Uh, and I've, I've spoken to students, you know, extensively. They, they are often very critical, some more, some less, some like, some love President Assad, some like him, some just don't like the other, the alternative that the Europeans and the Americans are offering in Edlib. And I'm sure in Edlib, it's not a police state, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, it's a democratic uh, Professor Morandi, there's a government. Disneyland in Idlib now. Yeah, I hear, I hear, I hear. Yeah, it's, it's, they they give discounts for international uh, visitors, from what I hear. So, I, I, I don't buy the argument. I, in Syria, I felt I've always felt comfortable among students on campus alone. And I've been to Saudi Arabia four times. I've spent four months in Saudi Arabia. I've been to other countries in the Persian Gulf region, which I won't name. And I felt much more restricted than Syria now, than Syria today. I'm not saying that Syria is a democracy. And I, I don't have an, an expectation for it to be a democracy. You can't have, you can't, so if someone tells me, you know, Venezuela is not practicing democracy in the way in which in some sort of idealistic way. It can't. I, if, if I was a leader in Venezuela and a foreign power was trying to overthrow me and use sanctions to manipulate the people and use uh, the, the internet to turn the public in, in, a, in a particular way, obviously I would be taking measures to prevent them from carrying out regime change. The United States has accused the Russians, as you all have dealt with, you know, you've all dealt with this extensively. Russiagate, uh, the, you know, bringing Trump to power through, you know, the, the forces in Kremlin, which if that really was the case, that just shows that the United States is not really a superpower. But, but uh, regardless of whether it was a legitimate uh, claim, which it wasn't, but let's assume it was, it, it was four years of crisis in the United States because of this accusation. And then compare that to a small country like Syria. Syria is much smaller than Iran. It's in, you know, much, much smaller than the United States. And this country is being destroyed through a dirty war where ISIS and Al-Qaeda or Al-Qaeda are being supported by the Israelis on, alongside the Golan Heights. We know this. I mean, the documentation is there, and your own website has a lot of information on this. And Max's book is uh, there's more than enough evidence. I've written a few articles. People could look the, look it up through those articles as well. Look up the information. You had tens of thousands of foreign fighters coming in from Turkey. You had literally hundreds of billions of dollars um, uh, being pumped into the country. I told uh, Aaron that during the dirty war, during the height of the dirty war, the Syrian uh, currency was stable, even though the country was being destroyed. The reason was because there was so much money being pumped into the country. So much money was being pumped into the country from countries in the Persian Gulf, from Turkey, from NATO countries, from the United States and elsewhere, that the country that was falling apart, city after city was being destroyed, factories were being dismantled and taken to Turkey, people were being forced to move en masse from one city to another. This, the currency was stable. That's, that's how much money was being pumped into the country as uh, it was being destroyed. So you cannot, I mean, no one can expect any country to behave normally under abnormal circumstances. And whether the votes in Syria were inflated and whether they were accurate, there's no doubt for those who've been to Syria that President Assad has a lot of popular support. 
You can see it through the gatherings that ex you know that they existed across the country. Someone can say they were all busted. In. Well, that's what you know. They always say that sort of thing. Why can't the Saudi? Why aren't the? Why isn't the Egyptian government, which has so much international support, why can't they bust in so many people to support General Sisi? If Assad is so competent, then he deserves to be in power. He was able to prevent all these countries from overthrowing uh, his government. If, if he didn't have some sort of popular support, how could he resist ISIS and Al-Qaeda? I mean, true, Iran supported Syria. True, Hezbollah supported Syria. But, I mean, if there was no popular support, how could Iran and Hezbollah stand up against the, the whole of NATO and the whole of, and the whole of the region and all the money that was being, being pumped into Syria? Iran was always sanctioned. Iran always had limited reserves. How could Syria ever survive if President Assad didn't have that sort of popular support? And, you know, what, what I find exceptionally disturbing is that a lot of these Western reporters, and I won't name them, but I know them by name. I've met many of them. Western reporters based in Turkey, in mainstream journals, every single one of them know this. Every single one of them know how ISIS got into Syria. 